I'm an FA here at the Senior Enlisted Academy. And tonight we're gonna go over Blackboard and some other tools for you here at the Senior Enlisted Academy. Joining me, I'll have uh, Laura Stout. She'll be available via chat. So if you have questions while I'm talking and you can put them in chat, she'll be, uh, she'll be available to answer those along with Amy. Santos and Mas uh, retired Master Chief Barry Crawford, who's one of our uh, adjunct FAs, adjunct FAs, excuse me, here at the Senior Enlisted Academy. First of all, I want to thank you all for being here. As you can see, please mute your mic and turn off your camera. I've heard some people in the background there. It'd be a lot clearer when everybody turns off their somebody's there you go okay at the conclusion of this lecture we'll have a question period where you can turn on your mic and ask your questions if you don't feel like you want to ask them via chat otherwise we'll go ahead and kick this off so tonight we're going to go over the syllabus we'll talk about navigating blackboard some students find this Blackboard to be a little overwhelming. We'll talk about some of the major assignments that the Senior List Academy has you do. Barry Crawford will go over the discussion boards. Then he'll kick it back to me for the keys to success. And finally, we'll wrap it up with good to know information. So one of the biggest things we like to stress here at the Senior List Academy is communication. That's the key to success. I like to say, be proactive and not reactive. When you're proactive and you read through your assignments and you read through the PEs and figure out what exactly you need to do and ask questions, communicate, then you most certainly succeed. We here at the Senior List Academy want um, our goal is for everybody to pass with flying colors, uh, as long as the adjunct FAs, who are all retired master chiefs or retired senior chiefs and prior FAs. So all our goal is to help you. Somebody just popped in there. Our goal is to help you succeed. And like I said, so if you have any issues, communicate those issues to us. So with that, we'll go over the syllabus. Our week runs from Monday through Sunday. And when I go over the calendar section of the Blackboard, you'll see exactly when things are due. Uh, most of the stuff is gonna be due at 2359 Sunday. The military FAs will grade the essays and they'll be with you during the in-residence portion of the Senior Enlist Academy. The adjunct FAs will grade the discussion board post and the capstone essay. Now, if that doesn't make any sense to you, just hold on. I'm going to go over all that here in just a few minutes. So just like any college class, you're going to have discussion boards post. These are going to be due on Wednesday at 23.59 and Saturday at 23.59 for the secondary. So your primary is due on Wednesday and your secondary is due on Saturday. And the secondary is the response to the primary. With that, there is one exception there. Week one, your primary and your secondary are both due on Saturday, 23.59. Otherwise, for the rest of the weeks, two through seven, you'll you'll be doing those primary on Wednesday and secondary on Saturday, 2359. Oh. I'm going to go through the Blackboard. I'll show you the weekly lessons. Each week's going to have certain requirements of you. Uh, we lay it out really as, as clear as we can. And you'll see that it was just look at, look at weekly topics and requirements. 
pay attention to that. And if you have questions, all you got to do is ask. The essays that are due during the distance learning portion of the class is uh, weeks two, four, and six. Weeks two is week two is your ethics essay. Week four, your problem essay. Week six will be your heritage, and seven will be capstone. You'll have two exams, weeks three and weeks five. And one thing to keep in mind, the essays that you write while you're in distance learning portion, they will be turned into speeches when you come in residence. That's with the exception of the ethics essay. Grading. <clears throat> We have a three strike rule here at the Senior Enlisted Academy. Three strike means the first failure you'll get, you'll get a counseling chip. The second failure you'll get a counseling chip and a academic review board. And then the third failure will go straight to the director for his determination on, on your continuation at the Senior Enlisted Academy. Now all three of those will require a rewrite of if you for instance, uh, fail an essay, and there's a couple of different ways to fail that. I'll go over that in just a second. Biggest thing is, like I said, communicate. And as far as uh, if you have any questions, and you can usually avoid failing altogether. You're going to get numerous emails about surveys. Yeah, if you've logged into Blackboard here recently, you see an announcement right at the top about the class up survey. That's from our good Dr. Bud. He'll shoot out weekly weekly surveys that basically he's trying to get your feedback so that we can make our course better, find ways to improve. As I said, staying on top of things is the key to success. Most notable things to avoid will be missing any deadlines. If you find yourself, if life happens, we like to say, if, if life happens and you are going to miss a deadline, this often is not an issue as long as you're communicating that to your FA and and your adjunct FA if it involves um, discussion board posts or the capstone. I cannot stress that enough that if you have any issues meeting a deadline, make sure you're communicating those issues. Communication is the key. We also have a similarity index, and I'm going to cover this in, when I go over the Blackboard portion. The similarity index changes for each essay. And what that is is we use a system. If you've taken any college classes, you probably use Turnitin. It's a commercial-based similarity checker. It checks thousands upon thousands of uh, various papers and compares what, what is being submitted to what has already been submitted in order to, to catch plagiarism. And I will say it's 99.9% .9 accurate. So there's some keys there. I'm going to go over those in a little bit about helping that out. Um, and lastly, where do you find the deadlines? Well, there's numerous places. We try to put those as many places as we can. You can see the syllabus. Yeah, one of your six steps was to go through the syllabus. I'll go through that in a second as far as what deadlines. The calendar, I think, is probably the most useful for me. You can get on there and check, click on any date and find out what what and what is due during that particular time. Also, like I said earlier, we have the weekly checklist that you can actually print out go through so you make sure you're meeting all the requirements and at various other places. Okay, we'll get on to the meat and potatoes of this lesson. That's navigating Blackboard. I'm going to show you how to get on the library, where announcements are, the weekly lessons, major assignments, go over quizzes and exams, or at least where to find them at. I'll touch on the resources tab, and lastly, I'll go over the My Grades portion. So 
So I pulled up my Blackboard, and you'll see, as I told you earlier, the class up survey is right there on the announcements section. If you go to the far left, hit this little arrow out, you'll get these blue tabs. These tabs are what are going to take you to various places within Blackboard. You've probably already hit the Start Here button, where it shows the six steps that you had to complete. When you scroll down to the Resources section, right there in the middle, And then you scroll down, you'll see various sections in here about three parts com, APA, credible sources. See, so scrolling down, and you come down to the college library access. Some students find this useful as far as finding resources and stuff to write about. The Navy College has an extensive library, just like any university does. So when you click this, you'll see the gray portion in the middle. These are little subsections. And you'll go to the library search. There's two different ways you can figure out how to get into the library. One is the step-by-step -step instructions. When you click this, it'll open up another tab and will show you exactly how to do it step by step. And I'm not going to go through that. If you feel inclined, go into that. If that doesn't work for you, you can also go to how to access and watch a video on it. And if that still doesn't work, ask your FA. They'll be more than willing to help you. OK. Next section is announcements. Analysis is an important tab to find out what's going on. For instance, when your DTS comes online, you'll see an announcement here. When you're in residence and they change the schedule, you, the schedule will be posted here. And as you can see, this is anywhere, any emails we send you that you may not be able to find are usually posted here in announcements as well. And again, to get to that, it's on the left-hand side, right down towards the middle, announcements. So what do you do every week? Talk about weekly lessons. Weekly lesson tab will show you exactly what we want. You'll see before you can get into the weekly lesson check, though, or weekly lessons tab, there is a knowledge check. Incredibly easy test, but you have to you have to pass this in order to get pass get into the weekly lessons. So I've already done that, and I'm going to go ahead and hit exit preview to my learner, which will take me to my login. So you'll see mine's a little different than yours is, but yours is, will match it for the most part. I'll go here to weekly lessons. When you scroll down here, you'll see what is required of you each week. And you'll see all the way to week seven, and then the last week is the admin week. I'm not going to go through each one of these, but I'm going to hit the first one. Then you can get the point of it. Okay, week one. If you haven't already done so, you got the six steps of getting started. It's got a due date of your PME, PME completion and six steps completion acknowledgement. 
You'll also make a post in the whole class discussion tab, which if you look all the way to the left, you'll see the and the blue tab here in the middle. It says whole class discussion. In here, whatever group you are, you'll go in and you'll make an intro. And you'll see, you see that a lot of people had already done it here in blue. With that, it's that, that's what that 21 means. Uh, eight people have done it here in the brown. So we'll go ahead and go in brown. And how to do this is you'll hit create thread. And it says it right up at the top, create thread. And you'll put information about who you are in the subject and message. And if you're having any trouble with that, again, reach out to your FA and just explain that. They can walk you through it as well. So now that you've made your whole class discussion, you go on to the weekly routine. routine. It's got some information there for you. And then it talks about DB requirements. I'm not going to hit too much on those. I'm going to leave those for Barry. He's a resident expert in that area. But it does say for week one only, your primary, which is your first post, and your secondary, which is your reply to somebody else's first post, is due no later than Saturday, 2359. Again, these deadlines are very important. You'll also enter your name and your group, group roster wiki, and it tells you exactly how to get there. To do that, You'll go to your homepage uh, all the way here at the left where it says whatever group you're in. For, the, for the, me, I'm in the green group. You'll go, you'll go down to the group homepage. And you'll see here's the green group. And then right there in the center, you see the group tools, uh, group properties here, group tools right next to it. File exchange, and go all the way to the bottom, it says group wiki. Now that file exchange is also important. We're gonna discuss that here in a second. You're gonna hit group wiki. And then you're just gonna add your information in there. So to add your information, it says it right here, edit wiki content and enter your info as this group. So we're not gonna do that right now. Okay. So after you've done that, you're going to select a topic from the Encyclopedia of Ethical Failures. You're going to post that, post whatever topic you want. I'm going to show you where to do that right now. So you're going to go to Group Discussion Board here all the way at the left. You're going to click that. You're going to spend a lot of time in this area. Again, you'll see that's where your six, six steps acknowledgement letter was. My essay topics, uh, and then you'll also see where the where you put your discussion boards. But we're going to stop stop right here at the top to my essay topics. Click that, and you'll see seven people have already done it. You're going to go to ethics essay. And 
it says here, post your topic for ethics essay here. Refer to the Encyclopedia of Ethical Failures for your topic. So you'll hit the reply button to the anonymous. Reply. This will come up. And you're just going to type in there. I choose this, and this is the page number. Um, I'll give you a... And, hmm. All right, so we were in weekly lessons. I backed out too far. Again, weekly lessons, week one. Scroll down. We've already done the group roster. We've already selected a topic from ethic, uh, Encyclopedia of Ethical Failures. So we're done with that. We wait till that gets approved by our FA. And then it's got some other information for you to do. Uh, one thing I want to point out here is if your email, if you don't get that email, you can email Dr. Bud, Dr. George dot Baker at USN. You can read that. Go ahead and email him and change, uh, email him if your email address changes or if you've used a military address and you want to use a personal. So he's going to be your point of contact for any email address updates. So go ahead and read through all that at your leisure. And as I said, if you want to print it at the very bottom, you can actually get a PDF version of this exact thing and then make the little check marks as you go. Okay, so as I said earlier, you have little subdivision right there in the center. This talks about the email address. This is what I was just telling you a few minutes ago. If you've submitted your military email address, we found that that doesn't generally work when you get here to in resident. So some people don't get their emails. So the best thing to do is to email Dr. Bud a civilian email address if you have one and he'll update that for you that way you can get the surveys and you can get whatever information you need to from blackboard and it's got the learning objectives of each week and the course material So the course materials where you're going to get all your information. So remember I talked about the Encyclopedia of Ethical Failures. You scroll down here. And this is where you get all your course material information. Okay, so that is weekly lessons. Next we'll go over major assignments. So again, you'll, you'll go over to the left-hand side you got major assignments. I talked about turn it in. Turn it in is the where we submit all of our assignments for, for plagiarism. One thing I want to make a note of is that some of these submissions can take a while. Some students run into trouble with this because they the deadline for the ethics essay or for your essays is 2359. And they'll turn in an essay at 23.30 and not realize that 
turn it in takes a little while in order to check the similarity. They'll come back and they'll realize that that essay that they turned in at 2330 was over sim. And at 2359, they can no longer make any changes to that. Again, that's on the due date. So how do you avoid that? You avoid it by turning in that essay a day before or two days before in order to turn it in to check your similarity. You can check it as many times as you want as long as you do not go over the due date. Some students have gotten in trouble because, like I said, they've turned it in too late and they don't get that turn it in report until after the due date. At that time, there's nothing we can do. And when you go over the similarity, you end up failing that assignment. And I'm going to go over the PEs here in just a second. So that's turn it in. If you need if you need help explaining similarity, there's some videos there and there's some instructions on viewing your grade so you can click that at your leisure. So your first your first ethics essay <clears throat> right here under major assignments Go down towards the middle, Ethics Essay Information. This is a short paper, and this one here is for feedback only. We've got some samples down here. If you look at number five, you have an outline sample, which you're required to turn into your FA, usually a few days prior to the deadline of the essay. And you have an essay rubric. Rubric is what we use to grade your essay. And I'm going to go over both of those in just a second. At number one, you have the practical exercise. This is your directions. This tells you what to do, what we what we expect of you, what the paper needs to consist of. Number two, you have the APA template. Again, APA, if you go to resources, you have all kinds of information in there, and I'm going to hit that in just a second. So let's go over the PE. I've already pulled up one of these at the very top. This is your ethics essay PE, practical exercise. I'm not going to read the whole thing to you, but I'm going to point out some things. So this will tell you what it is. The information tells you why we're asking you to do it. The assignment. You have to use three-part comms. This, this class is similar to a college class that you've taken. However, there is a difference. We use three-part comms. I'm not going to go over it three-part comms in depth. I'm going to touch on it, but you will need to know what three-part comms is. <clears throat> For your ethics essay, you'll need to do turn in an outline using that sample. You'll need to you to it'll need to be two to three pages. It'll need to be in APA format. And you have to have two references. If you look at section seven, it says a minimum of two references. And I will tell you this, three part comms is not a reference. You have to use an actual reference that you find on the internet or in the library. So some students will use the Encyclopedia of Ethical Failure as one. And then they'll use three-part comms as the other one. Three-part comms is not a reference. Okay, section eight, you have the turn it in similarity limit. That's 30%. With ethics essay, it can get kind of hard to get under that 30 because there's been so many papers turned in. But trust me, you can do it. And if you have issues, give your FA a call. And then it will go on and it talks about the two main points, background and impact. And I'm not going to read the rest. You can read that. So that's your PE. That's what's telling you what to do. How are we grading it? We're grading it with this. This is your rubric. How we grade is we will put your name at the very top and then we'll Ask, does this paper meet the key elements of the sign covered P, per the PE? Does it use three-part comms? Are you giving specific details? I'm not going to go through each line, but I'm going to point out some. Uh, the, second, the second 
section here talks about your three-part comms in particular. The first one is your intro. This is your attention grabber, your motivation, and your overview. Then it will talk about your main points, and then it talks about your summary. So you can see you have five, ten, ten points right there just from your intro and your summary. Format. Does it use the SCA, SCA and APA format? You have to use it, that. Citations. Are you citing things correctly? Are you using proper grammar? Again, you're going to get graded on all this. And the very end, you see similarity index. You see that it says 30 in there. Just like the PE, it said 30. Well, this is just for the ethics essay. It changes per, per essay. But for this particular essay, it's at 30. So as long as you're, if you're at 30, you're good. But if you're at 31, you're not good. Similarity index cannot exceed 30. If you do, you have a 30, you, it's an automatic minus 31 points. That's standard. When that happens, you get a 69, regardless of how good your paper is. That means you fail. You will have to rewrite that paper. So it's, in, it's important that you pay attention to that similarity index when you're submitting on Turnitin. And again, don't wait till the last minute because there's many students have been burned by doing that. All right, so that is your PE. We'll go back to the major assignments tab. As I said, this is your ethics essay. How do you submit it? Well, you go right underneath where you got the PE and it says ethics essay, submit here. This is where you're gonna hit this and you're gonna submit. And you'll see the other, the other essays that you have to do as well. The second essay is going to be problem method, problem essay. That's week four. You have the same information here. You have a PE, you have the APA template, you have the outline sample, and you have your ethics, I mean your uh, essay rubric. Again, submit right underneath. Your last essay, which is your military heritage essay, well, last individual essay, that's due week six. Again, PE here, you're going to post your selected topic and look at your outline. Additionally, look at your essay rubric. By that time, you should be pretty familiar with that rubric. We'll actually use a very similar rubric when you get in-house to grade your speeches, but that's later on. And your last, you have a, if you want us to look at your biography, you can submit it to your FA. It'll kick it around and it'll give you some good feedback. Okay, so I'm going to go back up to the top now. We've covered major assignments. We're going to go to quizzes and exams. If you look at the syllabus, I pulled it up here, it shows you exactly when your when everything's due. That's one of the sources I told you earlier. So if you scroll down to week three, you'll see that quiz one is due week three. Then you scroll down to week five, you'll see the midterm is due week five. How do you do those quizzes? You go all the way to the left, it says quizzes and exam. Click that button. You have your two, your quiz, which is week three, and your midterm, which is week five. So you'll click those buttons and it will take you on. It'll take you on to those quizzes. You'll see that it says it gives you a time test. 
of one out one and a half hours. And then you're going to need to save and submit it. So let's go over the calendar now. I told you that I, I think the calendar is probably the easiest location to find things. It's readily available. So you go to the left-hand side again. You hit calendar. And this comes up. You'll see that it's August 2018. Today, it's your second day of week one. So if you want to find out what's due tomorrow, you click it, just like an Outlook calendar. And it says six steps due. Well, let's see what's due on Saturday. Click that. It says discussion board primary and secondary responses due. So if you want to find out what's due week two on Wednesday the 5th, you click that and it shows the primary response due. And again, Saturday the 8th, you click that and it shows secondary response due. I'm not going to go through all of them. I just want to show you how easy that is to use. If you want to look at September, it looks a little different, it looks a little busy, but, it, but you can break it down very easily and see exactly what's due when. So let's go to September the 16th, everybody's favorite day. You can click this uh, very top one. It says quiz one due uh, or any of the other various ones. Like I said, I find the calendar very useful, but whatever works for you, just use it. So that's the calendar section. There's some other buttons over here. I'm not going to go through all of them. If you want to see where the SEA staff or who, who we are, you can click this button. It's also got our contact information on there. And I'm not going to go through the whole thing. I'll, I'll very quickly pull it up. There's Dr. Bud Baker. And some of the FAs are listed below him. So let's see. Last, we have resources. I told you a little bit about resources. If you go all the way to the left-hand side, the blue button says resources. Click that. If you are not good with APA, or if you have no clue of what I'm talking about when I say three-part comms, this is your bread and butter. This is where you need to go. Why? Because it shows you mastering three-part comms. It shows you mastering APA. It also, if you need to want, if you wonder if you have a credible source or not, we have a section for that. There's plenty of videos in here. Uh, that's where you get your library access and there's additional writing resources. So let's click on mastering three-part comms. I told you I'm not going to go over it in detail, but I'm going to briefly go over what three-part comms is. So if you go, you click on the mastering three-part comms, this page will show up. It says writing resources, three-part comms, sandwich here in these subsections. Click this. This is how we like how simple three-part comms is. Your introduction should be four sentences only. That's four. Three to four. So that's two for your attention, one to two for your attention, one for your motivation, and one for your overview. So again, your introduction should only be four sentences in length, three to four. So I like to say your attention grabber it grabs the reader's attention. I like to think of if you're sitting there watching a football game or whatever and a commercial comes on, 
that commercial grabs your attention. It's that 30 second. It's that quick, quick, quick uh, bit of information that grabs your re grabs the reader's interest. A motivation. This is your your with them. Uh, your who, what, why. So an example would be senior enlisted leaders need to understand three part comms. That's the what. The who is the senior enlisted leader and why? Why do senior enlisted leaders need to understand three part comms? Well, it helps them to get their messages out clearly and clearly and com uh, communicate effectively. That's the why. So again, you're with them. Who, what, why? Senior senior enlisted leaders need to understand three part comms because it helps them communicate clearly and effectively. Overview. This is where you're going to talk about those main points. Do you remember I told you about the PE? The PE that gave you the two main points. This is your ethics essay. Background is main point one. Main point two is impact. And in between there, you're going to have a transition sentence. So let's go back to the three part comms sandwich. Main point one going to be background. You'll have a transition sentence, which means at the end of main point one, it will say something like, now that you've understand the background of this ethical failure, we will move on to the impact of this ethical failure. It's that simple. It says you're done with main point one and it, you're moving to main point two. So main point one would be background. Main point two is going to be impact. That's your body. That's your meat and potatoes of your, or in this particular case, that's the, the the cheese and meat and tomatoes of the sandwich. Now the conclusion, that again should be four sentences. Summary, one sentence. It reviews the main points. Remotivation, it's the exact same as your motivation, just in past tense. And your closing, which is one to two sentences. So four sentences there. One for summary, one for remotivation, and one to two for closing. Closing is something that's going to make make that reader think, like, like, wow, that's some good information. Wow. All right, somebody's got their mic on. So let's finish up with three parts calm. We'll go back to the resources tab. Again, some people have not, some of our students have not been to college for a while. That's okay. We're here to help. Trust me, we want you to succeed. And there's plenty of students that come through here that have not been to college or have not been to, through college for a while. Some some have doctorate degrees, some have high school diplomas. It's okay because they all end up succeeding generally with, with the exception of a few. So if you do not understand a APA, somebody's got their mic on. All right, if you do not understand APA, you're gonna to go to your resources tab, click the APA style. There's a bunch of information on here about American psychological, uh, I cannot even remember what APA stands for. But either way, here's where you find out APA. And if you need to download the entire manual, very bottom, we even do that for, we even offer that for you. So if you're struggling with APA or three parts calm, this is where you're going to go into the resources tab. Resources is going to show you what you need to do and how you need to do it. And again, if you are struggling after that, find a mentor, talk to your FA. There's plenty of resources out there. I'm not going to hit on each one of these. You can read that. But I highly recommend you go through here and see exactly what we're talking about as far as APA, three parts calm. A lot of students have trouble with that. And citations. Make sure you're citing everything. As I told you, plagiarism will be caught. So make sure you're citing that. We'll talk about that. Actually, I'll let Barry talk about that inside when he gets to discussion boards. Okay, lastly, my grades, view my grades. Again, left-hand side, very middle, says view my grades. Click on that. 
shows you exactly what you got, what you have um, received on each discussion board post or ethics essay all the way down through the entire SCA course. Again, to get to that, left-hand side, view my grades underneath quiz and exam. So with that, I am going to turn it over to Barry. Barry, are you ready for this? I'm going to look in chat. Turn yes, it I'm unmuted. Okay, there you go, Barry. I'll let you. Do you want me to hand over the presentation, or you just want to do a uh, talk through it? I'm, I'm going to read off my, my notes, but if you wouldn't mind launching the uh, discussion board rubric sure. while I'm talking, that might be a good reference. All right, good evening or good morning, wherever you are. Class 218. I'm going to go over some um, tips for Blackboard engagement with your adjunct FAs. So Monty's already done a great job of, of distinguishing the separation of essays versus uh, the dis discussion board, but I want to give you some tips. So there's a, a one-page rubric on what we're looking for on the discussion boards, how to engage, what we're looking for, word limits, deadlines, and things like that. I'm going to uh, fill in some blanks here and give you some tips, the pitfalls, the things that we normally see that uh, can keep you out of trouble. And I really want to explain the intent of the things that we're looking for. So um, basics. Uh, be on time. One of the reasons you want to submit on time is so people have the opportunity to to respond to posts. If, if people are submitting posts um, too early, that means that that early submitter is not really engaging in the conversation. You're just kind of trying to knock it out and get it done. But then if you wait late, then people can't really respond or learn from your your uh, input as well. So it's kind of a we're trying to learn from each other, all of us. Some of your FAs will participate in it only a little bit just to steer the discussion and make sure you're you're thinking about what we're trying to get to in the material. But the, the adjunct FAs are not going to be very visible in that because it's really a class discussion. And the intent of the discussion board questions are to do a few things. One of them is to help you in your writing. We're going to give you a lot of writing and communication critique, which helps translate into how you can communicate effectively in your essay, in building a paragraph, building sentence structure. So you're going to get a lot of feedback there, and this remote vehicle gives us the opportunity to do that. The, uh, the second thing is we're looking for critical thinking. If a question is presented to you that says, why, you know, how does sexual assaults affect the national security. If you got a question like that, we're th as a senior enlisted leader, we would expect you to already know basics of sexual assaults and the damage that can cause to an individual. We're looking for very high, higher level. We're asking you to stretch your mind, think about connecting the dots, and we want to see you connect the dots. How does a local issue turn into a unit issue, turn into a battalion issue or squadron issue, and how does that turn into recruiting and impact and affecting a lot of things. So we're looking to see how well your critical thinking can kind of take an issue and, and see those um, those third, or, third order of effects. So the other thing I want to say about critical thinking is we're really interested in you making a persuasive point. Uh, we don't want to hear what you think you want us to hear. So we're not looking for a perfect text, textbook answer. We're wanting you to take a position. If you do not believe that's of something that's uh, said in the reading or material, or you have a personal experience to the contrary uh, of uh, conventional thought, it's okay. Take your position and try to sell it. Be convicted. Uh, try to sell your audience with persuasive arguments, research facts, personal experience, and it doesn't have to be the popular answer. If you want to go nuke Iran, that's absolutely fine if that's something you can you want to justify and push forward. So we're using these tools as a way of, of uh, structuring persuasive thought, which is going to help you with your essays, which help you in your persuasive briefs when you get to Newport. 
Um, common mistakes. There's usually two questions a week. A primary response means that you're responding to the question. And what you should do when you respond is you should uh, type it up in Microsoft Word first, do Q QC of it, spell check, grammar, sentence structure, punctuation, make sure it's good offline before you post it. Because if you just type in Blackboard directly, it doesn't give you spell check, doesn't, it, there's a little bit of a delay, you're gonna find that you're gonna be missing spaces and characters and it's, it's not gonna be good. So you'll save, uh, you'll save a lot of grief and you're gonna get yourself a lot of points back if you just do your primary posts offline before you respond. Secondary post is responding to one other student's primary post for that question. For that question. And the word counts are in the syllabus, but it's 200 to 250 words for your primary response. And I'm gonna say no exceptions, no less, no more. The reason is it's, a, it's an amount of space where we're challenging you to be concise and deliberate and persuasive in a limited amount of space. But if you go less, it doesn't really develop well. And if you go more, you're just rambling. You're not getting to the point. Uh, secondary posts should be 50 to 100. We're not, we're not interested in 300 word secondary responses. There's too many. So just keep it short between 50 and 100 if that's all right. And um, let's see, back to my email. All right, common mistakes. Quality of writing, I just said, telling us what we want to hear, I just said, so dig deeper and focus on sentence structure. So we're not looking for three-part communications in the Blackboard post because space does not allow for it. But we would like to see good writing skills, good sentence structure, start off a, start off a response by answering the question. If, you, if I got to try to find your answer halfway through or three quarters of the way through, it, it's so hard to, to see what you're trying to say. So answer the question and then develop your answer. If what's your favorite color and say my favorite color is, and then you start justifying it, explaining it. You can put some sources if you want to, to, to be more persuasive. The rubric does not require you to do citations and sources. Okay, it's not a requirement of discussion board posts. You should not be seeing any deduction of points because you didn't cite what you said. However, if, if in a post you said something like Saudi Arabia is the greatest threat to the United States, if you said something like that, the reader is going to be, where'd you get that? Where'd that come from? So if you wanted to support statements like that, use good sentence structure, put in a citation on there, and it just kind of helps your message helps the effectiveness of your argument, but you shouldn't be deducted any points. Um, the uh, rubric is a great source for you. You can be deducted points if you are late, and I wanna quantify that. Um, we have the freedom, if you miss each of your primary posts, you are an hour late, we have the right to deduct five points each or a total of 10. Then if you miss your secondaries by a day, then we can deduct another uh, five each for a total of 20 point deduction. Uh, we don't generally see people kicked out of the SEA for missing posts. However, your adjunct FA is gonna report to the military FA if deadlines are being missed and there will be counseling and they could lead, lead to uh, academic uh, issues if you continue to, to uh, miss deliverables there. But, even if you miss the deliverable for the week, it's still due. You still got to go back and do it, even if uh, they gave you a new submission date. Um, effective sentence structure. You're going to be writing this way, and the, the Blackboard posts are so small and so short, it's going to help you uh, talk about a subject more directly. So, you know, active voice is something very good to practice in Blackboard posts. Put the object of your sentence first, followed by the action. Passive voice would be, it's different. You're using a lot of commas in a sentence and, you're, and it's, it just doesn't flow very well. The action is, is first followed by your, your subject. So uh, read up on active voice and these Blackboard posts are gonna help you there. 
the uh, the adjunct adjunct um, FAs are all remote. They're not in Newport. Uh, we have some have jobs, some are retired. They're generally on different schedules. Some of them you can reach 24/7. I could care less if anybody calls me anytime. Uh, but in the uh, biography, they'll put their working hours, and they're generally very ac accessible and responsive to you. So ask any questions that you have if you're like wondering if you're going in the right direction. Um, week one is feedback only. So what we're looking to do is kind of level set and and see what your kind of communication level is your written level there your ability to read the instruction or or have you found the instructions there so week one is just to kind of get everybody funneled in at the right level and give we will give you some critique as if you were getting graded but it's not going to be a numbered grade you'll get feedback just to to keep you on track so week one after week one you guys will be all set uh, Monte do you think I'm missing anything no, I, I think you covered it all, Barry. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Okay, and with that, we've discussed discussion boards, uh, discussion board basics, word count, and citing sources not required in discussion board, but they are is required in essays. And you must do that in accordance with APA manual. Keys to success. Be open to the learning experience. This is not a college class. However, it's formatted and you will get upper level, upper level college credits for this class. It's an, ex it's an exciting experience. You will learn in the distance learning portion and in the actual in residence portion. Read and follow your practical exercises. The students that get in trouble are the ones who do not pay attention to what they need to do. Those PEs are written very specifically, and when we grade the papers, we are looking for those specifics. And what I mean by that is three-part comms, the citations, and the similarity index. Not to mention what we're actually asking you, that, that critical thinking. Pay attention to those deadlines. Again, if you have any issues with the deadlines, let your FA know. If it's dealing with discussion board or just capstone, definitely let your, let your adjunct FA know and your uh, FA know. Best just to go ahead and CC them both. Communicate early and often any issues. If you have questions, a lot of uh, SEA alumni out there, a lot. Uh, your CMCs are generally prior uh, SEA grads. Uh, if not, if you can't find anybody to help you out, let your FA know. We we have a wide network of people. Generally, an FA can reach out to somebody and help you out if you need a mentor. Good to know information. There's a student handbook that is located on the on Blackboard. You'll need to look through that prior to coming in on board. Uh, in residence, group t group shirts. Group shirts are developed by the group, and they represent your color and whatever you find exciting about the SEA, or as long as they are professional in appearance, you'll be wearing those when you get here in residence uh, for a lot of the PT sessions that we have uh, in the Buyer's Cup. Legacy gifts. We Generally, classes and groups, uh, groups will leave a legacy gift in the room, and a legacy gift will be left generally by the class. Uh, doesn't have to be. That's just what the previous classes and groups have done. So groups would be your, uh, if you're orange group or green group, you'll leave one in the green group room, and for class 218, would leave one in the actual actual building. Again, not mandatory, but that's generally what other classes have done. Prepare for in-residence. Res Here's some travel tips. Uh, start your DTS arrangements only when you're directed to do so from the announcements. Remember that section of the announcements I told you about? Make sure you're paying attention to that. It's going to tell you when to do your DTS arrangements. And if you're TAD, 
you have to communicate that with the DTS coordinator. Any questions, go ahead and talk to the DTS coordinator. There is the email address. I'll leave that up for a few seconds if you need to write it down. And if you don't get it here, you can ask your FA and they can ask, they can send you that information as well. DTS coordinator wants us to tell you that do not book lodging without reading the Blackboard SEA. Basically, whenever you're not being announced, uh, being being asked to do so, when that announcement goes out, that's when you book your lodging. Your DTS will be announced when you need to do that and Read the entire posting and review the SEA DTS instructions located in your Blackboard prior to creating your authorization. Again, if you have any questions, call, email our SEA DTS coordinator or your FA who can usually get you the answer as well. Summary. So we've talked about navigating Blackboard. We've talked about your major assignments. We've talked about discussion boards, keys to success, and good to know information. At this time, you are free to unmute, unmute your mic and ask any questions you would like to ask. Or if you're done and you feel you've gotten a good, good, then you can step out. So I'll hang out for a little while. If you got a question, go ahead and, and unmute your thing. Just identify yourself and then go ahead and ask. Yeah, this is uh, HTC, uh, uh, HTCS Hernandez, uh, Fred. Okay, I, go ahead, um, Fred. I have a question. If, if I'm loud, I, I apologize about that. I'm a little bit uh, hard of hearing. Okay, go ahead. But uh, my question was on this uh, weekly lessons assignment here. Um, at, at your color level, or color group level, sorry, uh, it says complete your uh db requirements two primary and two secondary for week one yes where exactly do i find that at okay i'm going to walk you through it are you looking at your screen right now yes sir okay so you go you'll start here at the very beginning i'm going to start at the beginning and i'm going to walk you through this so let me get to the beginning here when you log in, you're going to get this announcement section. This is what you should see. All the way here at the left-hand section, do you see these blue tabs right here? Sure do. Okay, you click on weekly lessons. See how it says week one? This is where you find out what you got to do for that week. Okay. All right. So this is where I imagine you're talking about, let's see, let me find out. Complete your DB requirements right here at the very, the bottom, number one, that's what you're talking about, right? Yes. Okay, so go ahead and scroll all the way to the left, scroll down. Now I'm a member of green group. I'm not sure which member you, uh, uh, what group you're in, but if it doesn't matter, you'll see this little tab, uh, this little arrow, click that. You'll see these, this section here all the way at the left. It says file exchange, group blog, group discussion board, and so on. Do you see that? I sure do. Okay, click the group discussion board. This is where you're going to make your discussion board post. Okay, so this board will open up. It says discussion board. Scroll down. 
And this is exactly, remember I showed, told you to do the essay topics? So you're going to scroll past that, scroll down, and it says week one, getting started writing in profession of arms week. Click that. Okay. So you've got two questions in here, profession of arms and three parts comm. These are your two discussion board questions. So for the first one, profession of arms, click that. It says thread profession of arms. This is your actual question. It talks about the non-conditional, I'm not gonna read the whole thing. So you, you'll read this question and then you're gonna hit reply. And as Barry said, you'll go ahead. His recommendation was to put it in Word first and then copy and paste it over here. So you would copy and paste whatever you want to put in there. Okay, fair, fair enough. I think the uh, my horse got a little bit uh, ahead of my cart here. I, I'm looking at this. I did that already, but uh, like only five. I said I got my my horse got a little bit of. I may not have known, but yeah. like 95% um, of okay. Is there a way to edit this, this thing here? Uh, oh, edit, yeah. edit what you've previously done? Correct. So you should be able to go Correct. into, so like, like you see this, Antonio Horton made a post here. Yes. Right, right there at the bottom, it says reply, quote, and edit. Okay. Oh, I see it now. Fair mm -hmm. enough. Fair enough, because I I don't think I I even uh, met that limit that y'all that uh, where y'all uh, require there. No Fair worries. Enough. That's what that's why they do the feedback only on that first week. Does that answer okay. your question? It sure does. All yeah, right. I appreciate it. No problem, Fred. Okay, so Abdul, do you have a question? Uh, no, I do not. I, I'm sorry, I do not have any question. I wanna say thank you so much. Uh, you guys have been very, very informative. Um, I, I mean, again, I just complete my uh, Master's of Science, so I'm very much familiar with all of this stuff. Awesome. You know, very, very familiar, yeah. Well, I look forward to meeting you, Abdul. Absolutely, thank you so much. Yes, yeah. sir. Yeah. Hey, Monty? Yes. Yes, Barry. So I got an offline question I just want to address. So it had to do with citing sources in the discussion board posts. And so I just want to clarify it if anybody's confused. Uh, the rubric does not require citations or sources. What I am saying is if you put a, a quote, you're putting something in there and you want to practice citing your sources, then it helps push your argument that we recommend doing so. But if you're going to do that, try to format them correctly for good practice. Don't just put a incorrectly formatted source or citation in a response. So practice good habits and do that. But we're not supposed to penalize you for improper citations because the, the rubric doesn't require it. So it's a little gray area, but I just wanted to speak to do it right. And if you need an example of what Barry's talking about, look at the first discussion board post and it had the professional arms. I got it up on the screen. Uh, the actual question is, is up there in the first five sentences and then down below is two citations. So these are not required. However, what Barry's saying is you can put them in there, just do them correctly. Uh, you may and then that way you can practice on how to cite things correctly. Okay, are there any other questions? Looks like quite a few people have left. Good evening. Uh, this is Mel from Gray Group. Hi, Mel. And just have a quick question. Um, okay. Of all the apps that are out there, I know it's suggested for, you know, um, I guess your groups to communicate, obviously, like before the um, actual residence 
um, convene. Uh -huh. What do you guys find most helpful? And as an advisor, are you guys open to joining the group? So some advisors will join. Uh, generally, if, you, uh -huh. if they're asked, they'll join. The one that is most popular, I think just because it's easiest for people that are overseas, is the Group Me app. It doesn't have oh, to be right. that. The group me is just uh, has uh, I've found that that one's probably the most popular with amongst the students co in coordinating. Okay, and then um, if you wanted to email like the entire group, do we just utilize um, you know down at the left where you like click on your group and then it says email group? Absolutely. Like, if you type a message, is it'll go to everybody in the group then? Yes. So I can actually show you real quick if you'd like. Yeah, you just click, uh, go right all the way to the left, hit the send email. I'm going to mm -hmm. clear that out. And then this will actually show you, this is all the all the people in, this is, mine's actually green group, so whatever, you said you were a gray right. group. So you would hit right. uh, mm -hmm. select all, and then just move them over there, and then you can email mm -hmm. everybody just like that. Perfect. Okay. okay. Sounds good. All right, cool. Mel. Thank you. No problem, Mel. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and shut it down unless anybody else has any questions. Oh, here's a question. How do I find out who my FA is? So, Mohammed, I'll tell you, if you want to look at the screen and you go to your group, uh, look all the way to the left. Underneath all the blue tabs, you'll see the what group you belong to. If you ha Generally, you're going to get a, an email from your FA. But if you haven't gotten that email, then definitely go to the green group. Click click that. On the very bottom, it says group home page. It's going to open up. And right, go ahead and scroll down. Underneath group properties, it's going to tell you exactly who your FA is and who your adjunct FA is. So if you see underneath this group property, for instance, for Green Group, uh, Senior Chief Castillo has put in there who he is, that he goes by AC, and he tells you a little bit about himself. So everybody, if you do not know who your FA is, go to your group homepage, which is located on your left-hand side, and then that will tell you exactly. Does that answer your question, Mohammed? Okay, good. Okay, any other questions out there? Uh, yes, this is uh, Fred again. Okay, Fred. Um, under the uh, group uh, tab, I guess, towards the le left, Bottom left hand side, the uh, file exchange. Yes. Uh, I clicked on that there and it says uh, no items found. Uh, is there anything that we have to do with that there? Okay, thank you. I, I actually meant to go over that. File exchange is where you're act you turn in information to your FA. For instance, the outline that you need to turn oh. in for your ethics essay, you're going to go to file exchange. And do you see the very top, it says add file? Yes. This is how you upload information to your, your FA or to the whole group. So anybody in, in this group can see this, whatever you put in here. Does that make sense? It, it sure does, yes. Thank okay. you. And I see, Mohammed, you got an answer about your DTS. Usually in the second week, I just don't want to give you exact date because it it's not always, but I, I assure you, you will get an, there will be an announcement as soon as she's ready. 
we have a DTS lady here who's, who's a genius, and she, uh, but she gets quite overwhelmed with the amount of students that we have coming through. So yeah, a couple weeks, usually week two, you'll you'll start to see something. All right, any other questions? Otherwise, I'm going to shut this down. Call it a night. Look forward to seeing everybody. I don't see any more questions in the chat room. Oh, okay, I do see one. All right, it says, uh, what format? We generally generally recommend Word. Generally, Word is what we'll use. Uh, you can also do it in PDF if that's the only thing, but your FA is going to kind of specify that. Well, generally, it's going to be the Word document. Okay. If there's no other questions, here we go. PDF is hard to grade. Yes, PDF is hard to grade. Agree. Definitely talk with your FA on that one. All right, good night.